Ever since he was a kid, Ken Holloway has been packing up the family wagon and heading off to a secluded beach shack. For all my life we've been living in the suburbs and heading off to the shacks was uh, something which we really looked forward to and treasured. We're going to a beach in the Royal National Park called Era. My father built a shack there uh, just after World War II in 1948. Royal National Park starts 30 kilometres south of Sydney and is the second oldest national park in the world. In the park there's over 200 shacks. There's over 100 at here. And I'm fortunate enough to have one. I've been going there since I was born. It's a two kilometre downhill walk to Era, and even as kids, everyone in the family had to carry something down the same rough bush track Ken still walks down today. If you, you can have a boat, you can come in by boat, or, or if you're rich enough, you could probably fly a helicopter. But apart from that, the track's been the same since they first started walking in here. The shacks were originally rented off a local farmer. Then in 1953, the land was added to the National Park. Since then, the shack owners have fought various battles to hang on to their shacks. At the moment, the community is heritage listed and the shack owners are on a 20-year lease. The most amazing thing is that when they were built in the 30s, 40s and 50s, a lot of people didn't have cars and they brought this material by public transport. Bags of cement, iron, fridges, timber, that all had to be carried in one way or the other. And uh, the monuments to people's pioneering spirits. Finally here. The main thing which draws people is the remoteness, the peace, the quiet, looking out over the trees, the ocean. You can just sit back and, and relax. People come for the surf, to relax on the beach, go fishing. But no one can relax at ERA until their refrigerator is going. With no electricity, that means lighting the old kerosene fridges that are the prized asset of every shack. It's a fiddly job, but it's just one you have to do. Filling the kerosene tank underneath. Trimming the wick and then lighting the wick, adjusting the flame under the fridge. But once the, the fridge gets going, you just have to monitor it for a while because if it smokes and goes out, you have to go through the whole procedure again because it always needs a fridge to keep the, the fish and the, the beer cold. But bringing fridges into ERA wasn't easy. Most of the fridges came down the hill. I think two fridges came around by boat. Not only did you have the old wooden boats then, which leaked, but you had to navigate the, the shore dump, which can be pretty ferocious. So you had to wait for a, a very quiet day. Usually, even then, somehow the fridges ended up getting a bit of a drink in the salt water. The fridges tended to rust. <laughs> by the time you landed or brought it around by sea and then carried it across the beach and then up the hill, most people thought it was easier just to, to bring it straight down the hill. The comfort factor varies from shack to shack, from the basic to the palatial. Nothing is wasted at ERA, especially empty beer bottles, something Ken's more than happy to supply. After carrying a heavy pack down and lighten the fridge and go for a surf, I do look forward to, to having a, a few beers. Mm -hmm.